at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, September the 9th, the Major General in command of the Administration Eastern Command informed the Chief Engineer that no action need be taken as it had been decided not to establish a camp. At 8 p.m. the same evening, a message was sent that a camp was to be got ready for 12,000 men, which is 12 battalions, on Saturday, September the 12th, and for another three battalions on Monday, September the 14th. This was at once telegraphed to Major Sherrod. The task given him was almost impossible, but he did, with unremitting exertions, actually accomplished it. The camp, though of course by no means complete, was ready. Water was laid, ablution, cooking and latrine arrangements were made, and the troops marched in on the Saturday afternoon. Shoreham, 1914. Approximately a hundred years ago, where many troops gathered and this place had a very different purpose. Whereas now this may look like an ordinary park in an ordinary one day town, this once was the place where many soldiers called home while war raged on. In this short documentary we will be looking at the camp that once stood here and the way in which it evolved and adapted to the needs of the soldiers who lived ate, slept and trained here. In 1913, this piece of land was mere farmland and the growth of the camp began after the declaration of war. In 1914, the rapid assembly of tents formed a new town for the soldiers and workmen who would soon be living here. While the tents themselves were used, they were not the best form of accommodation given the weather. Although their design did allow for relocation to occur in September 1914 where they were moved from Slonk Hill to Buckingham Park. These tents provided shelter for the hundreds of people who stayed here. And these were also what many promotional toy soldiers were based off of. While the tents themselves were not the most ideal accommodation, they provide necessary shelter against bad winter weather. Within time, the conditions of the camp changed as the production and completions of huts occurred. It was deemed a great improvement when the new accommodation huts were deemed fit for use after their swift construction over the winter months of 1914 and 1915. It was obvious that for things in the camp to improve, serious changes needed to be made. While, yes, the tents were in serious improvement on the bare floor and blanket conditions that the camp started out as, serious changes needed to be made. Within time, the conditions did change as production and completion of stronger and more permanent structures was created. This started with a large hard surface which was used as a parade ground. This was used for basic drill and marching training. Wooden buildings were erected for headquarters staffs, housing and quartermaster stores and these were built alongside the square parade ground. Next to be built were the wooden housing for the medical officer, staff, a small army camp office, the need of which came from the large amounts of mail accumulating at the camp, and a sanitation unit. These huts were greatly appreciated, although some features were not included, such as laundry facilities, which when requested was replied with the construction of housing for Shoreham housewives that would be able to do that for them. It was deemed a great improvement when the new accommodation huts were deemed fit for use after their swift construction over the winter months of 1914 and 1915, after a mudslide made it so life in the Thames was becoming more and more inconvenient. These huts could each house 20 men each, including a commanding corporal in charge of each accommodation hut. The camp continued to grow, with new divisions joining in the camp over the coming years from this early development, growing to a self-sustaining wooden town as training continued in Shoreham. Over the years, the five divisions that lived here and worked here made their imprint on the surrounding area and the lives of those who lived there. Nowadays, what once was a large camp, housing thousands, is now only remembered with a memorial in the St George's Chapel of St Mary's Church, and the land that once was a strong local feature during the war is now replaced with modern day housing, a riding school, and other classic features of a 21st century town. Searching will counter march. Right about turn. We'll count them off. Right about turn. Section mark time. Section.
action.